Hi everyone, it's me Janine, aka Just Jets. So I'm hanging out in the inventory room, just going over some of my inventory behind me here. So I wanted to take this time to do a video to try to help anybody out that's looking to resell for the first time and do a video on my experiences as a reseller because I officially hit my two year mark as being a reseller. So I wanted to share my experience with everybody on what I dealt with my first two years as a reseller. So hopefully this video can help people out on things that uh, they will come across as being a reseller and just ways to try to help you guys out in all different types of situations that I experienced. So I'm going to get started by showing you, by telling you guys a few of my experience that I had with customer service. And then I'll go into inventory and shipping and, and different things like that. So on my customer experience part of it, uh, it was my first few months being a reseller where I went to an auction place that I was doing Goodwill first and buying a few little items but then I I found that about an auction place so I got a good variety of different types of items from electronics to clothing and home decor and everything so I just posted quite a few items and one of them just happened to be electronics and I had a customer reach out stating that their product did not work which I know it did because my husband helped me out with electronic stuff and he tested all the stuff that was open box before I posted it. So, but this customer claims that it wasn't working and then we tried helping him out and showing him, well, maybe if you do this with the item and stuff and it just didn't work out and the customer was upset. So I know normally the eBay process is you have them return it you verify that it doesn't work and then you choose to refund them the money. But, and since I was new and I was only doing it for a couple of months and I wanted to really have a, a really good customer service rapport with my new customers, I just told them I apologized and I ended up giving them their refund and everything even though I knew it worked and I said, oh well, I just lost out on money and stuff. But at that time, I was only doing it for a couple of months and I just wanted so much to have a good customer experience with my customers for the first time. So that's how I handled the situation. Now everybody's different to each his own. I'm just going over what I experienced and how I handled it or I just gave them the refund right away. Uh, the second one was how to do with clothing where a customer reached out and said that their box was destroyed and the stuff was damaged and and I and they were showing me a picture of like this torn off thing and I'm like what that's not how I sent it I know I packaged it correctly I know exactly what it looked like I had the, all the pictures from when I posted and everything and so anyway so again I told the customer I, I I'm sorry that you had that experience and I said I'll give you a full, full refund well, the customer, I guess, was taken back. They didn't expect me to react the way I did. Um, and after time, that person ended up responding back to me, apologizing and everything. Even after I already refunded them and everything, I guess they felt better the situation. I don't know. But in turn, they end up being one of my best customers. And after that experience, they bought from me all the time. No issues and everything and good reviews and all that stuff. So it all depends on the situation. Every situation is going to be different. But those two situations, the way I handled them for the very first time as a reseller, where the customer wasn't happy, I probably could have handled it differently and, and told them to return it and then me check it out and all that. But I was just so into making sure that my customers got a really good first uh, experience, good first experience with me as a reseller. I just felt that I had to do it that way. But I was happy in the long run. I ended up getting a, um, a return customer over and over again out of it and stuff. So every, every situation is going to be different. But those are the two that stand out to me that, um, that I experienced that I learned from it. Uh, now, going forward, any other issues that we had uh, with a customer, which was never like a negative thing. It was just like it was the wrong size for them, meaning that they ordered the wrong size. They, like I 
I put the description in correctly. It's just that they're, the extra large didn't fit them as an extra large because every um, thing is different for a person. Like the way a fabric is sometimes, the way it fits on somebody that normally uh, wears an extra large will fit different because of the way they, the product was made or whatever. So I've dealt with those type of returns, which is not a big deal. You know, they return it, everything's fine with it, and it's true, they, like, the pet, the labels, they'll still leave on it. You know, the, the ones that all, all have a um, newer tag on them, they've left it back in that same condition for me and everything, and I've had no problem in giving them their refunds and everything. So, yes, yeah, so overall, those were the only two really major hiccups that I, that stood out to me, that I learned from. Um, but other than that, all my customers here, customer experiences have been good since then. Uh, the other thing that I dealt with was for my shipping and what I experienced that I lost money on was two different episodes that stand out to me was one where I got a whole bunch of boxes from the post office where you're supposed to get them for free and stuff and I ended up getting a whole bunch of boxes and the box I didn't realize actually had the shipping method on them like one set priority mail and then the other ones had like a flat rate priority mail on it and the the way the uh, one order was shipping at had a different I can't remember exactly what the shipping method was but it was different than what was on the box and I packed everything up brought it to the post office and thank god I didn't go to the self one where I can scan my own packages in and drop it in the drop box I brought these up to the to the counter. Thank God I did that because the postman there said that your shipping method on the shipping level doesn't match the shipping the shipping that's going on the box there. And I went, oh crap. So he's like, yeah, you need to repackage this where it doesn't show that shipping method and stuff. And he says I couldn't like just cross it out either because that's like defacing it or something like that. So I said, okay. So in turn, I had to go all the way back because I had to make sure I shipped it out that day. So I lost money on that shipping label. I lost money on, on the supplies that I ended up using, the tape and all that. And gas, too, because I had to come back, repackage it all, redo a new shipping label, and then drive all the way back to the post office to ship it out. So, yeah, that was a big experience for me that uh, I learned next time, always recheck all if you're going to be using one of the boxes from the post office, it doesn't have an already shipping method on it that doesn't match your shipping label. Uh, the other thing was for uh, shipping boxes, shipping material, is always make sure that the inventory that you're going to be posting onto your eBay site, that you already have boxes for it because you never know when the stuff is going to sell right away on you because it can sell the same day that you just posted it. And that's what happened to me is I posted stuff and I didn't have the right size box for it. And I was all stressed out and I had to run to the store, grab a box, come back home, pack it up and ship it out. So it was just unnecessary stuff that I had to do because I didn't match my inventory of boxes with the product that I had in stock. So those are the things that I learned my first year. We actually, it was my first few months doing reselling that I experienced all that. So this is my recommendation for you guys is to make sure that your boxes match your inventory and that you have the proper packaging ready for a tube. Make sure you have enough bubble wrap ready or any type of packaging that you're going to be using, especially if you're dealing with fragile items. I try, try to steer away from them. I did in the beginning with shipping fragile items and I always stressed out the entire time and had like anxiety over it going, oh my god, I pray to God it gets to them, right? And if it's smashed up, then I'm going to lose money and all this stuff. So for me to worry less, I just steered away from the fragile stuff. So I don't ship fragile stuff anymore. Uh, what I have in my eBay store that's small and dainty, that that that's it like I didn't add anything more to it because it's too stressful for me and also I just deal with a lot of the clothes now and um, like shoes and things like that and uh, stuffed animals and th things like that but 
no more real fragile stuff. I It's just too stressful for me. Uh, and now I'm switching up my eBay store anyway, where I'm doing more electronic stuff, meaning uh, gaming systems, small little gaming systems, and um, also games themselves, like games for Wii, um, PlayStation, um, GameCube, all those types of games. Um, because my husband, he is uh, passionate about gaming gaming and stuff and he's been doing it for like years and years and years so he got into um, reselling games now and stuff so we're using the my eBay site to put those games on there and stuff so he's getting involved in all that now so I'm finally switching up my inventory with more retro type stuff than my same old clothes and stuff because I haven't gone to an auction place in like forever because the place that I was dealing with, they had to stop because of personal issues that they were having. So I wasn't able to get any more inventory for like months now. So I had to look for different avenues. So when my husband um, was talking to me about the gaming thing, I'm like, that's a perfect idea. That'll switch up my inventory. That'll give me different customers and a different group of customers that are into like gaming type stuff. So, so yeah, because I have a, quite a few followers now on my eBay store, but now I'll have a variety of more different types of followers that are pertaining to, like, gaming type stuff. So that's what I'm dealing with, with right now. So I have to say for my first two years, it has been a really joyful experience. It's been an eye-opening experience. Just the joy of doing the auctions, um, to go and see what, what product you're going to get. And that's my recommendation too, is that was a big learning experience for me was going to the auctions and getting inventory because now I have so much inventory left over that I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with. What I mean by that is, so when you do the auctions, they have a, they take pictures when you do it online and they take pictures of the big huge bin thing that's on a pallet right you know they only take pictures of the back of it the front of it and the top of it you don't know what's in the middle you don't know what's on the bottom so you're taking a gamble and thank god i only spent like a couple hundred dollars on those because i have spent up to a thousand on certain auctions but the one that i only spent like four or five hundred dollars on now what happened was that is I didn't know in the middle that it was a lot of the same item. So I still have a lot of that same item there because you can only post, you know, if you have like, let's say, a hundred pieces of an item. I'm not going to post all hundred of them on my eBay side. I only post like 10, 20, and then as my volume gets lower, I can, you know, go in and edit it and, and add more more volume to it. But I still have all of that product still just sitting here. So that's what I'm coming across now. The other mistake I made too was that the auction place also had buy it now pallets. Where you can go right to that auction place. Look at the pallet yourself. And determine if you want to buy it right then and there. And then you just load up your vehicle with it. So when I did that the one time. It comes out that it was a whole bunch of boxes right you can't be tearing open all the boxes they don't allow you to do that so i was able to look what the label was on the outside and it said little kids clothes and stuff and it had a 10 pack here a 10 pack there 20 pack there. i'm like wow that's a lot of clothes well i didn't look at it as well as i should have i was just so amazed like wow i got all this for like I think because their average going pallet, I think was $500. So I spent 500 bucks, right? And then when you add the tax and everything, you're talking a little over 500, right? So I get it home. I start opening up the boxes. It comes up, I realize I have over a hundred pairs of these little girl shorts that are the exact same color and the exact same size. A hundred of them of the same exact thing. I'm like, how the heck am I going to sell a hundred pairs 
of little girl shorts that are the exact same color and the exact same size. And I have that on two of the items. I have these te little girl teal shorts that are extra small and I have like a hundred of them. And I have the same thing with these little girl gray shorts that are an extra small <laughs> that I have a hundred of those. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, there's there was a variety but not enough variety and I didn't need that many of the same exact item so that's what I'm sitting on now what I have behind me that I bought last year that I've been sitting on because you know I only posted like 15 of them or 20 of them but if they're not really selling then I can't keep replenishing them and the thing just sits and sits and sits so that's what I have back here now is the overabundance amount of inventory that I have left. So my advice is when you go to those auction places, look at them very, very carefully to make sure you do not have an abundance amount of double the product because of the same thing because you'll be sitting on it for a long time because not too many people are going to keep on something unless it's like a really unique item that you know that it's hot out there, but if it's just a plain Jane, solid color, no name brand thing, it, you might be sitting on it for a while. So, and that's what's going on here. So, those are my things that I experienced that I learned from hardcore, <laughs> especially on a financial standpoint. But I have to say, that whole auction in itself, though. Uh, there was so many things to it that I have sold enough of it since last year when I got it that I have reached what I spent on it. So I'm starting to make a profit off of it finally, but I'm still sitting on a lot of inventory from it. Uh, and I'll be sitting on it probably for a long time until I come across maybe a reseller that is willing to buy half of it for something. I don't know. I'm looking into that now. I'm reaching out to other people. Um, to see if they want at least some of it, a chunk of it, just to try to, you know, get it out of here. Because for me to sit on the same thing, <laughs> the same size and color of like, I'm down to like 80 something items, you know, it just, it's just taking up too much space right now. So that's my advice for you guys. Uh, if you go into those auction places, just really look at them really carefully before you spend hundreds of dollars on items. So that's my advice to help you guys out on the inventory side of things and the shipping side of things and the customer side of things. <clears throat> and just overall, enjoy the whole experience just by not getting stressed out about things because it's not worth getting stressed out over it. Because if you love what you do and it becomes your passion, then it's really not work at all. And I really feel like it's it's not work what I'm doing right now. When I worked in warehousing for 30 years, yeah, <laughs> that would work. But now, me doing the reselling thing for two years, I wouldn't trade it at all because I work my own hours, I am my own boss, but even me being my own boss, I have disciplined on how many hours do I spend on doing uh, certain items and certain um, steps that you have to do in making sure that you're posting enough stuff and that you're flowing your inventory and everything, that you're not uh, losing money by letting stuff sit. Just making sure you're always monitoring your inventory, making sure, too, that your inventory on your eBay store matches your physical inventory, too, because you don't want any many hiccups because the worst thing that can happen is that a customer orders something from you and they buy something from you and you don't have that item because you didn't recheck your inventory or you messed up on your account and didn't realize it because when I post if I'm posting a lot of um, one item where I'm posting like 20 20 pieces of a pink shirt with stripes on it and I messed up and I put down 19 then I'm gonna be then I'm gonna be messed up on it uh, because well, I will, because I have 19 physically I have 19 but I put 20 in the system and then the last one's supposed to sell and I don't have it because I messed up so always make sure that you are frequently doing inventory checks and checking your inventory um, basically what I call cycle counting which is 
checking what the system has, which is your eBay store, and checking what you physically have. That's what I learned from warehousing. We would do cycle counts. We would check our inventory. And basically, you would check to see what the system has, and then you would physically go and count to make sure that the two match, which we call that in warehousing, cycle counting. So basically, I took that concept and implemented it into my eBay business. So I do my own cycle counting. I check my eBay store, see how much I'm supposed to have of that specific item, and I physically go there and I count it to make sure they consistently match so I don't have any hiccups because the worst thing you want to do is cancel an order because it affects your eBay um, numbers and stuff and especially if you're a top rated seller because you have good customer service, you're shipping on time, you have no defects, no anything, but your defect rate will go skyrocket if you keep canceling orders because you don't have the inventory available to give to the customer. So always make sure you're doing your cycle counts on your inventory. It's a little warehouse <laughs> eBay little uh, thing that I learned. So hopefully that guy that can help you guys out. So hopefully these tips that I gave you guys can help you guys out on your new adventure. Anybody that's looking to do reselling for the very first time because I've been doing it for two years officially now and I love it and I wouldn't change it for the world because it's so rewarding to be your own boss, getting stuff done, making your own money on your own time, doing your own thing because if you love what you do, then it's not work. Alrighty guys, take care and thank you for watching and look forward to my next reselling video to give you guys more selling tips. Take care guys and have a great day.